So, uh, previously on Rise of the Rune Lords there. After vanquishing various villains vying for variations of vaulted vim and vigor, our heroes decided to stop back by Turtleback Ferry, relay their triumph to the mare, and then used a rock to make their way back to Sandpoint, hoping to arrive before the giants. After traveling for a few days, resting in between, the party finally made their way back to Sandpoint. After pausing briefly at the gate so Sanishi could berate the guards on their lack of foresight and leaving the gate wide open there, they quickly made their way down to the town hall. Once inside, they met with Mayor Devrin and Sheriff Hemlock and began to regale them with the tales of their adventures during their absence from the town. Finally coming around to the point of their visit, they warned of an impending giant attack on the town, but had no idea when it would occur. After discussing the threat, the sheriff offered to speak with Fenton, the leader of the good neighbors that had previously hired the group for a job. Eh? The sheriff seemed to think that Fenton might have an idea on how to keep the townspeople safe when the raid finally came. The group then made their way to the Rusty Dragon for some food, drink, rest, and reuniting with familiar faces. So then today, the adventure continues, eh? So, uh, where we left off was at the Rusty Dragon. I believe uh, Grelda was upstairs, and everybody else was down in the uh, main floor drinking. If I remember correctly. Sounds about right. To Icky, at least. Who's had one or two to drink? You know, one or two. Oh. Uh, wait, let's let's not forget that what just happened downstairs was uh, the beautiful reenactment and Sinishi's entertainment of the entire bar. This yep. is true. Good. Only a little threatening necessary by the, uh, the barkeep. Interesting story. I think I'm gonna go. What time of night is it now? I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, it is probably in the seven eight o'clock range. About this time. And we were remind me, we were waiting for the sheriff to talk to Fenton. Um, the sheriff was going. Said he was going to um, arrange a meeting with Fenton for him and you. Okay, so I'm supposed to stick here. He said Do he we would. Still have rooms. Um, the last you had heard. I will double check with uh, Bethana. Bethana. <laughs> Bethana. Um, currently Bethana is sitting uh, back behind the bar. She had been paying full attention to Sunishi's, well, actually, um, to everybody's reenactment of all of the wonders that you had done over the past few weeks that you've been gone, and she just leans back and. As, as you turn and ask her the question, Oh yeah, we've got the room set aside for you. We won't give them out to anybody else. You have them as long as you need them. If you're going to be gone for more than a couple of weeks, we would appreciate you letting us know because maybe we could give them to somebody else. But until you tell us, they're all yours. In that case, if anyone needs me, I will be in my room. Do ya? Do you need some extra pillows there? I can get you some extra pillows. If anybody needs them. I know, I know you, she points to Icky. I know you've got the feathers. I've got some down pillows. It might feel just like extra. What? Sounds so decadent. Egads, they're filled with baby birds, Icky. <laughs> Icky considers asking where the feathers came from. Just, just but assume it came from chickens. Just assume. 
just just she decides to roll with it. <laughs> She's like, sure, I'll I'll take a few extra. Okay then. How many, do you do you want two? Do you want three? I only have so many, but I can give you a few. One for each wing. Sounds oh. marvelous. Ah, uh, so is that just two, or do you have any other wings hiding under there that you haven't shown me yet? Oh, just just just, just the two. two. All right, all right. Hey, can you get this guy a couple of extra down pillows? Take him up to the room. They should be there in just a minute. There. How how big are the feathers? Are we talking? Like well, I can't say I've ever actually ripped open the pillows to find out myself. I'm assuming they're the normal down feathered length. Okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. editorial note, that would be like this. That's why I went like this. <laughs> Somewhere in this general range is the size of the feathers. Yeah. It's, a, it's in, somewhere in this general waft. Well, feathers do waft. They do. They can. They can, do, and will. <laughs> All right. He's pleased with the prospects of playing with down pillows. <laughs> Continues with his drink. All right. All right, so Tarnan, you're heading up? Yep. All right. Sanishi's already, or I'm sorry, uh, Grelda's already upstairs. Um, Sanishi, Geisen, are you gonna stay down, drink, move upstairs, you gonna do anything? Uh, my story's, when my story's finished and I, you know, if anyone, if I answer any questions audience members may have, I'm gonna, you know, make my way upstairs. Okay. Making my way. So is, is Icky heading up too, or? No, Icky's head, hanging out downstairs at least, uh, for a little while longer. Yeah, I think Geisen will... Stay downstairs for another drink. Okay. Um, after, um, it's just uh, Geisen and Icky. Um, is there anything you guys want to do? Conversations you want to have before we let the time pass? Um, Icky would, uh, you know, like, like Icky and Geisen haven't really had a chance, you know, like, the, as, like a, as like a one-on-one since all of this crazy-ass shit is happening. Or has been happening. Um, and you just, you know, be like, you know, guys, and I just like, I have no idea. No. No idea how you do the stuff you do. But man, I know you do it well. And I appreciate it. Well, nobody could claws like you could claw. Hmm. You know, years of experience. It, you know, not all of us can be blessed with claws like this. I mean, you. I, I try not to make mention of your lack of claws. I figure it's disrespectful, but um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I've never really missed them before, but they do look useful. I can only so imagine. I mean to ask a. a an Arico Aracocro, that's a, uh, a monk, just seems like an interesting combo. Yeah, I don't think we ever talked about, like, how, how did that come about? Are there a lot of Aracocro monks? Um, and Icky, without breaking character in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> um, um, it's like, it's actually, um, Kind of a, uh, it's not not as uh, uncommon as you might think. Uh, a lot of a lot of my people are just we have a connection with. Uh, I mean, you might find it funny, but with the land, with you know, like with the sky, with just uh, the elements and the uh, and really just maneuvering. Through the winds, through the wilds, comes naturally to us. So at least it always did to me. Um, so the you know, certain other aspects of the martial arts come naturally to some. It just it, it, it seems like you've had a lot of practice. A bit, 
a bit. It's uh, not a uh, not been the easiest path, but somebody's got to squawk it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So That's fantastic. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, like I said, without breaking character at all. Um, but clearly, uh, this this uh, this talent of mine has come in handy <laughs> in all of our adventures. So I can only uh, say that I'm grateful for. Uh, for all the powers, the the strengths that we all have, so we can try to protect people and uh, put an end to this kind of needless suffering, you know? I agree. I think we're all pretty unique, but we all we all bring talents together that make us a good team. Yeah. I think we're... Uh, we're a very strong group, and really, with our with our strengths and our wills combined, I don't think that there's anything that we can't accomplish. And I think that putting a stop to whatever is coming to to this town, if we can do that, man, I don't if, think if we any... can kill a dragon, huh? we can do anything else. Seems right. Like. Although Mark is still out there. Yep. We've got, who knows where those dragon... Those, well, we, we know that the marks came from Mark. But... Yeah, there's just... we got to be ready for whatever comes our way. Bigger and badder bads are always on the horizon, my friend. Okay. Well, I guess in... Uh... In terms of getting ready for that, I think I'm gonna head to bed as well. Uh, I won't be far behind you. So I think he's intent just to finish finish his beverage. If anything happens in between that and now and that, he'll deal with it. Otherwise, up to bed. All right. So um, as you guys are having this conversation, it's starting to wind down, and you both talk about bed. Um, Thanks to your passive perception, a very very nice roll. Um, like you are, you are t just looking at each other, in depth conversation, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you are both surprised as two um, tankards of beer just like <laughs> slam down on the table right between you guys. And then, as your head, you look at the beer, and as your heads turn, you see this mm -hmm. young boy with this wide brimmed hat and the hair sticking down, and he's looking at you. He's like. I've been practicing my sneaking. You didn't even see me gone. I had no idea. Where did like, and, and, like so? All right, so Icky like notices this, right? And in the sentence, he goes like, gestures at the mug, gestures back at Geis, and is like, "Where did this come from? Did you just magic this out of nowhere?" I. I, I put it there. You didn't even see oh. me. You didn't hear me. Mugtoo! <laughs> oh my god! Where did he come from? Haddock! Oh my god, boy, come here! Like, you know, he, he you know, like, throws his, you know, big winged arm around Pat. He's like, I, I didn't even see you there. I didn't feel you. That was marvelous, boy. Marvelous, boy. I've been practicing. Sneaking up on horses is a lot harder than sneaking up on you guys, so I've been practicing making sure the horses can't see me coming. Icky, wait, wait, let me... If I wanted to roll to see if Icky is offended by that... <laughs> you absolutely can. I just don't know what I would roll again, you know, like... It, like you know, I don't know like, if there is an offended <laughs> stat, so... Icky, Icky is, Icky, Icky is going to be good and good-natured about that comment. <laughs> Um, oh, that's, that's great, boy, it's great. Oh, I'm glad you've been practicing. It's been coming to good use. Where else are you sneaking? 
Well, just right next door to my, my job. I, I tried sneaking over there, practicing against the horses, sneaking over here, trying to get around the customers. It was kind of rough going at first when I would come back and got kicked a bunch, but by the horses too. <laughs> but I, I, as I clean them and threw the saddles on them, I'm starting to get good. I, I, I haven't been kicked in, in days. That's, sometimes all you need is the right motivation. And I have to say, bringing us beers, a great way to practice. Yeah. Well, I heard that you guys were back after a couple of weeks, so decided to see if I could do it. I did. Ah, that was excellent. I just don't ever stop training, though, because now, now I'm going to be keeping an eye out for you, you know? Next time's not going to be so easy. Oh, you go ahead and keep your eye open. Like I said, I'm just going to keep practicing. I'm going to keep getting better. You're not going to find me. I'm going to be invisible. And, you know, the, the more beers you're carrying, the higher the challenge, the better the practice. Too. Keep that in mind. That's actually a really good idea. I'm going to have to remember that. I've only done three tankers so far. I could, I could try for five. Yeah. That's, that's brave. I believe in you, Paddock. Oh, all right. Uh, well, if you ever bored, come try and sneak up on me next door. I've been, been working there the last couple of weeks. And, uh, I mean, horses can only be cleaned so much. Mm. All, all right. Is, is it just you guys? Right. Is the, is the, is the bloodbath lady here anywhere? Oh, we're, we're all here, buddy. It's been a long day for some of us, so we're just upstairs. Winding down. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, whole reason I came over. I was told that uh, yourselves and Sheriff Hemlock, whenever, uh, whenever you're ready, uh, you know who is ready to see you guys. Does he know who? Um, thanks for the tip. Does right. Icky know who? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, what, I have to know if you know who was like a, said in a Voldemort sort of way, or if he has any idea what that actually means. It wasn't said in a he who should not be named kind of way. It was said in a conspiratory way. Uh, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go work on the horses. Ah. You didn't see me. And then he just kind of turns around and, like, half crouch, starts scurrying back. <laughs> well, I'm glad we stayed up for one more drink. Yeah, no kidding. I and, guess uh, two more drinks. Yeah. I'm trying really hard to think of somebody else that Icky might misconstrue Paddock as, like, meaning <laughs> he's, like, ready to talk. But, like, yeah, can you remind me the, the rest of like, us? Everyone that I can think of is dead. <laughs> or, or in the bar. The, the rest of us know about that group and the leader, right? Even though it didn't, wasn't Tarnan the one that met with them? Tarnan was the one yeah. who met with them, but Tarnan kind of gave everybody the uh, the rundown of what was going on. And you all were in the, the room with the sheriff and the mayor when uh, talking to Fenton was brought up. That's right. Okay. I I believe we have had them refer to us as the good neighbors, and we were given the shiny side of what they do as the reason to go steal from the lady. I uh, so. yes, I, I I don't think Tarnan gave you the full rundown, but so I, I think that parts. I think that Icky would likely have enough wherewithal to realize that you know like oh probably what the sneaky boy was talking about um so uh it turns to uh turns to guys and is like i think we should uh let tarnan know or uh let him rest for the night seems I'll, important i'll uh i'll just message him and i don't actually know if the spell would wake him up or not you Sean? Well, he would hear it. 
It would be a whisper so, in my ear. Yeah. So it it would very range. much depend on how asleep he was. I'm... Could the response be fragments from Tarnan's dreams? Because no, that uh, could be good or whoa. bad. No, I don't want to wear whoa. the bear suit again. Don't make me wear the bear suit again. What? Um, you don't so need yeah, to make I'll, this up. I'll We're send him a message if he's if he's up. Cool, and if not, then we'll talk to them in the morning. Blank out so the I, first I, two. Blank out the first two words or first three words of uh, the message, and then tell me the rest. Uh, well, what would you say? I'm sorry, I didn't think it was that hard. Just like start talking and stop saying the first three words. Just kind of mute those three. <laughs> um. Told us that. What's the what the hell's the guy's name again? Fenton. Paddock. Oh, Paddock told or Fenton. Us that, told us that Fenton is available to speak to us. There's a pause, and then Tarnan comes back. Holy fuck, that's unsettling when you have no idea it's coming. Is that what it's like for you all the time? <laughs> uh, it's a little easier, I think. When you understand how the magic works, but it's probably that way for the rest of the game. Well, um, you get to explain to Bethana that she has to uh, restuff the pillows and the mattress. They're very dead. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you for the message. I will be down soon. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, so he's he's heading down. All right. Um. Icky in that case will uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait up knowing knowing Tarnan he probably doesn't want any help or company but I'll wait and check as Icky slides the bar is like one, <laughs> one more please <laughs> yeah, yeah. the man behind the the uh, the young teenager behind the bar just kind of looks at you Light, dark. It, it, it can kind of like, like, like um, I, I picture the, uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> well, now we want to know. Well, I, I, so I was going to say like the, um, uh, what is it? It's uh, Beifong, from, like Chief Beifong from, uh, uh, from Legend of, uh, from, uh, yeah, Legend of Korra, just being like, <laughs> dark just dark. incredulous that the question would be asked of him in this establishment and as okay. as the, the boy sees your face he actually like perks up and hurries a little bit puts it out of it slides it to you dark, dark? okay thank you thank, thank, thank you Turner walks in pretty quickly after that I mean it only takes him a minute to get up redress, sweep some of the feathers aside, and walk down the stairs. All of a sudden, Paddock jumps out. <laughs> Surprise! Stab! Son of a... I knew this Stabby, happen. stabby! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> it was me all along. I Take was Mark. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yes, you do see um, Tarnan coming down the stairs as Geis and Nikki are still sitting at the table. Gentlemen, if you give give Tarnan a wave, in a clear like, I acknowledge you, but also expect you to interact with me from here on out. Way. It's a lot of body language to expect from a different species. We, how many is that? Uh, how, how a head nod, a head nod, and a wave. I feel would be pretty uh, self-explanatory at this point in our travels. You waiting for the claw or the wave? But I'm gonna I go see. Him, right? Are you gonna head out and uh, do that shopping? Yes, I'm gonna go see him. Do you want any company? Any help with that? That's entirely up to you. Um, I don't know how they feel about everyone coming down, but I have no problem with you guys coming along. At least coming to the White Stag, so that. Uh, 
if further ideas and explanation need to be done. You know what? Let's go. You're my family. You're my team. You're coming. Sanishi! That was good. They're upstairs. Oh, Sanishi's upstairs? Sanishi and Grelda yeah. are upstairs in their rooms. My turn. Yeah. Hey, Sanishi! <laughs> I message her loudly. Hey, Sanishi! Are you awake? What, what would happen if we messaged somebody at the exact same time? It would over um, the voices would overlap. Everybody hears this giant thunk from upstairs, <laughs> like a scream. Are you awake? What? 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 Oh, 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 Captain. What? What? <laughs> Do you want to stay sleeping in like five minutes, or did you want to go with us to go uh, to the White Stag? What? You're awesome. Did... Have a good night. We're gonna go talk to the people. Okay. <laughs> it's not as it's not as fun. I'm still ashamed at how badly I jumped when you messaged me, guys, and you're a jerk. I just want you to know. Thank you. Well played. Oh, hey. Are you try drill, though? Yeah. At the same time? <laughs> uh, I, I, let's not give her a heart attack. You go ahead. Hey, Grelda. Are you still awake? All right. Question for the DM here. Yes. So we went minutes. up. No. It, it's only been 10 minutes, and y'all fell asleep and were undressed. And there were uh, like there was a heart to heart. I'm just I'm asking how long it's been since kind of the wrap up because we. I would, you, you did you did go up before anybody else, so yes. I will just say it's been about an hour. Okay, then the other question I have for you is, how does message work? Like, can he hear her thoughts? Like, no, it's just can... um, it it it's in your head, and then I think you can respond verbally. Now I need to double check. You respond verbally, but only I hear it. Only the only the person you send it back to hears it. So Um, yeah, the the target hears the message, so only you can hear it, and you can reply in a whisper that only Tarnan can hear. But it is a whisper, so if you are whispering, then anybody that would be within whisper distance would be able to hear it as well. See, that doesn't make sense. If it says that the only person that hears it is the recipient. But they say can reply in a whisper, which I read as talking. Well, then why say that only he can hear it? Yeah, that wouldn't make sense to me. They can still hear whispers but not understand it, maybe? Or not understand it? No, oh, that could know. be. All right, Sean. Yes. I'm just going to do this, and then you tell me if it doesn't work, okay? Okay. So it's, it's been long enough that I, unfortunately, am not going to have the super fun response that some of you may have been hoping for, because Grelda's in the bath. <laughs> However, Grelda's in the bath singing the songs of her people at volume. <laughs> well, in that case, we already know she's awake. Well, I mean, I assume it's not, like, right next door. But, like, if you whispered that, basically, what I'm imagining is she would hear that, and then, like, in that moment, it would be, like, sound cutting on, and you would hear her singing. Um, you, I, I would, I don't believe the response cuts in until the message is done. So you would, you would need to sing through his message. And when he stops talking, then it's, like, the walkie-talkie your turn. So if you continue to sing, he would hear it. But that would be... I would say she would definitely continue to sing, because his <laughs> message was very short, and she was... But there's good acoustics in here, all right? So, basically... You might have to try again, because she didn't respond the first time. You heard singing. Loud dwarven singing. Something about rocks <laughs> in a language you don't really understand. <laughs> or do you speak dwarven? I actually don't know. I actually name. don't believe you speak dwarven. Nope, I don't dwarven. speak dwarven. Does the singing sound happy or painful? I oh, mean, very it's, happy. It's, it's dwarven. I mean, it could sound painful. No, it sounds like uh, I'm, I'm imagining more of like a um, Hobbit okay. style dwarf. Okay. So like when they sing sad, it's real sad. So this is like. 
<laughs> I turn to Geisen and say, well, she seems to be quite happy right now. Perhaps she's really excited about the upcoming battle. Um, she's thinking about being very dangerous over short distances. To be honest, I, I don't speak Dwarven, and everything that came through in the message was Dwarven. I got 25 words of Dwarven happy singing. And it, <laughs> I mean, it was pretty. It was cool. She's got a deep voice when she wants to. I mean, <laughs> like... It's the beards. Yeah. Anyhow, um, let's let her be, and if you're coming with Let's you and I go and handle this. Icky? Yep. Yep. Keep an eye on I'm the coming. kids. Or are you keep coming? An eye. I figured you would keep an eye on the kids because one's asleep and the other one's singing and having you here at least, you know, manning the post down at the bar is okay. Or you can come with. Which do you prefer? Wait. If you don't need the hand, I'll stay here. Okay. We'll see you back soon. All right. Tarn heads through the door. I'll okay. follow. All right. Um. Then, as they leave, uh, Grelda, Iki, Sanishi, would you be doing anything over the next, let's just say, hour? Sleeping, doing Nothing. that whole soldier sleepy thing. Found <laughs> myself a moment. Wow. Nothing of note. All right, are you going to stay down drinking, Icky? Or are you going to go up? It could probably uh, stay down for at least the next hour. Just kind of waiting the the return of Return and Geisen, or at least a signal from them. Okay. And then Grelda. Grelda would gonna... finish her... She'd finish her bath, and then <clears throat> check uh, at the bar with... <laughs> Bethana, who I assume would still be there, mm -hmm. uh, as to whether or not her um, in progress fear had come in along with the dragon skull. All right. Well, as um, as you come downstairs, Icky is still down there. So you, Icky, you would see Grelda coming down the stairs prior to you hitting Bethana at the bar. Icky would just like raise a glass, acknowledge that. He's available for engagement if that's if uh, if yes. desired, but doing his own thing. If you've got other things on your mind, the the mug raise and the nod, I like that's multiple yep. multiple uses. It's it's the universal language of alcoholics. Zelda understood every gesture. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so actually, as you come downstairs and this is happening, um, Bethana is the the bar goes in an L shape, and at the corner of the bar, uh, Bethana is sitting across from a, uh, an older woman, wrinkled, white hair, and they're both kind of leaned towards each other and, and chatting. And she's busy. Is there anyone else behind the bar that she could ask? Um, there is the, like, young teenage boy that has, that, you know, he's behind the bar, he runs out, drops off any beers or kind of just doing bartending in general. Okay, then she would ask him. Uh, what? You ha do you, beer? Did you, do we buy beer from you? Do we? Is, is it called Dragon Skull? Do you sell it? Do we need to buy more in the back? How old are you? He <laughs> kind of perks up, brushes his hair out of his face. I'm 15, ma'am. And you're speaking whole sentences. I'm actually very impressed. Um, <laughs> he stops. Is there Th a deal thank you. Buy? What was that, I'm sorry? Is there an adult in buy? I d I <laughs> and he points to Bethana. I me or her? <laughs> Okay, thank thank you. Grelda like lets him off the hook. Yeah. Welcome. And he kind of walks off to the side. Okay, so I guess she's gonna walk by, wave at Icky, and then head upstairs to clean uh, her axe. Okay. 
All right. Then then you head upstairs. All right. Anything else that you would guys like to do over the next hour or so? Uh. <laughs> that doesn't count. Oh, well, that's all I had. So I'll be right. Back. All right. Um, okay. Then in that case, um, Tarnan and Geisen exit the Rusty Dragon Inn and take the seven minute walk up to the north gate to the White Deer Inn. Anything you guys want to do over that travel? Five minutes of silence, and then he stops walking. And he looks over at Geisen. What do you think our chances are? Chances. Several giants, lots of ogres, potentially a dragon. I think we can handle the giants and ogres. We've handled that sort before, especially if we have people from the town helping. If the dragon's there too, it's going to be a challenge. But that's my problem, involving this town. I don't know that I... Go ahead. Do you think the good neighbors are likely to offer us any assistance? If I'm being honest with you, I'm hoping the good neighbors are going to have a plan on how to get most of these people the hell out of here. And only the ones that are foolish foolish enough to follow us, me, whatever, stay here to potentially lose their lives. I want you to find out what the hell these people want. What what would those things want? What can we give them to get them the hell away from this town, guys? I don't know. Judging by the the pool, I guess m multiple pools that we saw, like at the brewery and everything. I, I'm guessing that they want something to do with that the the tunnels and the the ritual pool and everything down there but that's just my only guess i i don't know what they would want with just a, a village so how foolish does this sound to you we find them ahead of time we make a bargain with them we won't interfere with them they can have what the hell they want if they leave the town unscathed i mean we can try it i I don't know how likely they are to listen to us. I think they're more likely to just... I, I think they would probably enjoy destroying the town. I would look forward to that. Way. I agree with that thought. Do you have any ideas, any... Have you put any thought into how we could discourage that? So that maybe... Offering them to... Take what they want and leave us alone would be preferable to open conflict? Oh, really? You could show them the dragon skull, but they probably just pissed them off. Can we use that to our advantage? Can we use that dragon skull to lure them away from the town somehow? Or is, that just gonna, idea. or is that just going to incite them to rush right into town immediately? Like that could go either way. I mean, really, if they can get the, the townspeople the hell out of here, the town can be rebuilt. And it's probably a, a better place to fortify ourselves than out in the open somewhere. Okay, I agree with that. If we can get the people safe, the town can get torched. If that's what it takes. If that's what it takes. I even know where there's about $8,000 worth of gold sitting at the bottom of about 20 feet of ocean water. <laughs> it's been on my mind a lot lately. Good. I Ogres aren't exactly known for their intelligence we could probably 
build some kind of traps or something. I, I don't know how much time we have. So. I'm assuming we have about four hours. Going under that assumption, they can be here any time. So what can you do in four hours for us? I mean, I, I almost wish this was a freaking flood again, because I know what you can pull out of your ass for that. I mean, uh, traps aren't really my specialty. Disarming them, I'm good with. I could probably reverse engineer a few that I've seen, but I don't have the time. Or scale. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Sorry, I just wanted to try to bounce some ideas off of you before we walk into this meeting. Let's go talk to these guys. And turn and starts walking in. Walking on. All right, so as you uh, make your way and you begin to approach the White Deer Inn, standing outside of the door, you see uh, Sheriff Baylor Hemlock kind of leaning up against the door and he looks at you as you approach. All right. I suppose we should go in and do this. And he pushes open the door and waves you in. I walk in like I own the place. All right. Uh, the sheriff <clears throat> comes in behind the two of you. As you walk in, you see there are there's the same bartender. It's a uh, fairly large man, not overly round, not overly muscular, just a large man with a bald spot on the top of his head and the rest of his hair kind of tied back. He's got the bald spot on the top. He's got the friar tuck tied behind him. Um, just sitting at the bar, hands on it, just staring as you walk in. There is one older gentleman sitting at the end of the bar, and then there are two um, men hunched over separate tables sitting by themselves, just drinking and not looking at anything particular. As you walk in, the bartender looks up, looks at both of uh, both of you, Tarnan and Geisen, and kind of nods at each of you, and then looks at Baylor and just leans back and just shakes his head. And then he begins to walk around the bar. Tarnan turns to Baylor. Is this something that the uh, guys and I should handle and let you just uh, stay outside? He just, he looks at you, looks at the bartender. As soon as we get past here, my brother won't be an issue. He just kind of walks by. Um, the bartender walks around and walks into the back room, Tarnan, where you had been before. He doesn't even look over his shoulder. He just ends up walking and he kind of disappears around the corner. I follow like I own the place. Okay. As you enter that side kind of storage room, you see him at the end, standing in front of the shelving unit that he was before. He puts both his hands on the side of it, leans his head down, and then takes his hand off of it, and the shelving unit just slides to the side, and then you see the opening in the stairway. He just steps back. Feel free. He's expecting you. Turn and nods, says nothing, walks down. About the time he gets halfway down the stairs, he starts pulling out weapons. All right. Um, guys, and I'm assuming you follow behind him, and the sheriff yep. trails behind everybody. Um, as you guys, as uh, Geisen walks down, both Tarnan and Geisen, you hear low mumbles, one from each of them, and then the... Um, Shelving unit slides into place behind you, and your path is lit, lit by torches. It goes down, curves to the or 90 degrees to the right, and then back to the left, and that takes you to a Tarnan for you familiar 20 by 20 room. Um, there is a table with three men playing cards, and then there is one man on the side of the door leading into the room where Fenton is. Big Burly just leaning against it with a, a box beside him. He looks at all of you and just kind of nods his head to the box. Would you say that that path was uh, lit? Or um, yes, the entire path was lit by torches. Ah! Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. 
Anything further on that? Uh, were you not around? You might not have been around just at the very beginning today. Oh, no. Okay. okay. So. But yeah, um, I, I would let turn in uh, handle this. This is kind of his scene. Um, I messaged you guys, and any weapons that you have, they're expecting you to surrender now. This should be fun. Watch. I uh, conjure my my. Uh, what what the heck is it? Your hand crossbow. Yep, I conjure it. Okay. It. My packed weapon. I set it down, and then I conjure it again, and set it down. And I shake my hand. I conjure it again. I set it down. And I look up the big guy. He looks at you. He looks at your hands. His eyebrow raises, and he just kind of shrugs his shoulders. So I set it down again, and as I walk by, it's not in the box anymore. He looks. He. He. His eyebrow is still raised, and he's looking at you, but he doesn't stop you. I think the only thing Geisen would have would be like a staff. Um, staff. You might have a t dagger, maybe. Possibly. Okay, but Geisen is a weapon. I think Geisen should be in the box. <laughs> Ta -ta -ta! Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. His hat. His hat is a weapon. Does Does Tarnan think of that? Al uh, Alavander. He just puts Alavander <laughs> in the box. Woo! Woo! The spell book that constantly follows. Yeah, leave the spell book so you can cast spells from that location. That would be great. Yep, okay. Turn, stops, turns around, picks Geisen up, sets him in the box. <laughs> Does Geisen allow himself to be picked up and put in the box? I guess. <laughs> Geisen just has this not again look on his face. Can we remind everyone that yes, he's short, but he is an old man. Like, don't you have like a wizard's beard? That is the picture you gave yeah, me. Yeah. There is a beard, and then the like, top hat with the glasses on it. I'm just consider. I'm, I'm just picturing a fixed, constant look of disapproval, and like, dude, really? Yeah, absolutely. And uh... put down with his arms crossed, just like. I, I have minor illusion now, um, so can I make myself look like I just started on fire? You and, can do whatever you want. Uh, whatever I want. Okay. Well, anyway, so yeah, I'll, you can I'll, try to do whatever you want. Are you gonna make it look like you're on fire? Yeah, and then I burn away, and then there's just a, a huge sword sitting. In the in the box. Uh, is there a is there a perception save against this? Because I need to know if the guard is freaked out or not. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything. I see minor illusion. Da -da -da. And then once that happens, I just step back out of the box. <laughs> Chair, money for friends. Yeah, sound like smell like. I guess. Oh, the sound, uh, the, it can't create sound, light, smell, or any other sensory effects, but I'll, I'll, I'll let that happen. And the, the guard, he's leaning back, he watches Tarnan put you in the box and his eyebrow is raised and then it just kind of goes back down and he just, he looks like tired as he watches this take place. And then Geisen just bursts into flames and that's the only time he actually responds. He kind of takes a step back. Watch you disappear, watch the sword, and then watches you get out and he take he kinda of looks at the three men sitting at the table, looks at you, looks back at them, and then looks at Tarnan, and then looks at the sheriff, and just like And then leans back against the door again. Or back against the wall next to the door again. And then the sheriff Hemlock comes up from behind you, takes his long sword off of his off of his belt, puts it in there, and then two daggers out of his boots, sets them in there, raises his hand, and as he does, the the guard opens, pushes open the door. Have fun. And then the door is wide open and he beckons you inside. Alright, um, it's been about an hour, so take a five minute break, check on the kids.
and then we'll pick up with you guys going into the room. Back up. Skip up and down. Skip it up All right, so. Um, so we're picking up. Uh, Tarnan walks in the room. Uh, you see the long table with the chairs on. Oh, what the fuck? Sorry, my camera is being a bitch. There we go. Alright. Alright, so you see the, the long table, the fireplace off to your left that is currently has uh, low flames in it, illuminating the room just a little bit, casting some shadows. Um, you don't see anybody in the room immediately except Fenton sitting at the end of the table. Um, as Tarnan steps in, you do notice uh, the two guards to the corners beside you, but the two guards that were in the opposite corners are not currently there. So Tarnan walks in. Um, Geisen, as you walk in behind Tarnan, you cross, you take a step and begin to cross the threshold of the door. And as you do, you feel a slight tingle over your entire body. And you see your vision, you see um, a wave in your vision, kind of almost as if you're underwater. And this is the same kind of quick sight you see when you take your necklace off when you take your uh, amulet off uh oh and oh. and the the oh. um the sheriff is following behind you do i do i feel like my magic is also gone or just the the you... am i able to tell that you don't know, you don't feel anything different. You just, um, the way your vision kind of shimmers, that's the same thing that happens when you take it off and the illusion goes away. Um, I kind of clear my throat to get Tarnan, or actually I've got message. I message Tarnan. Um, actually, um, so, no, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, am I looking a little different? No. Um, as you, you... Geisen, at like you, the shimmer is gone. You you're kind of part way in the room, and as you go, you do realize that you cast message, and nothing happens. So then Tarnan is still I, walking forward, and and I clear my throat to uh, to get Tarnan's attention. <clears throat> can I stop. I turn. And as you turn, you do see um, Geisen. I'm trying to remember, when you told them about the burns and everything, did you take your amulet off and show them? Yeah, he's seen it. Okay, then yes, you would You would notice that this is Geisen as he is, minus the illusion. And would Geisen be familiar with what would cause like magic to be you know, dampened or whatever? Like... Um, give me an arcana check. Uh, 20. 20? Um, you would know that there is a, there is a spell and it could be an enchantment, um, an anti-magic field, that anything inside of that field uh, spells magical objects. Uh, spells won't work. Spells cast from outside the field into it disappear. Um, magical objects become inert when they go inside the field. It is basically, It cancels out all magic in it, period. And as far as you would know, that's the only thing that could cause this. There's no, there's include, no way is, around it or anything. It's just. Does that include magical abilities or just spells and items? You don't know. And not that you're aware of. Fair enough. And as like as this happened, you clear your throat, turn and turns. You just hear, like, over the small crackle of the fireplace. Interesting.
Gerson, are you comfortable um, staying well, here? Or would you like to wait just outside the door? Um, I mean, Gerson probably looks a little shaken. He was definitely not expecting that. Um, do I get the sense that the sheriff has noticed me? Um, you're facing forward and you haven't heard anything. Um, then I, I guess I'll say, uh, maybe I'll go check on something. And, uh, I kind of turn, try to turn and go through the doorway in a way that the sheriff wouldn't see the front of me. Okay. Um, as you turn and kind of walk out because of how short you are, it is lower light. You do manage to kind of make your way around him. And as soon as you cross back over the door, you get the same sensation as when you put the amulet back on. Um, when you walk out, you notice the guard is still on the side. The three gentlemen are still over playing cards. Like none of them were looking at you at the time. So you do manage to kind of make your way out into that little holding room. And I'll just uh, just kind of wait in the holding room um, near the doorway in case like your time needs me or something. All right. Uh, the sheriff kind of turns back. Did he shimmer? He's looking at Tarnan as he says this. Yep. Something in this room does not agree with him. He will stand on the outside and uh, deal with it from there. Huh. And then you just hear from the side. Well, if we didn't have something important to talk about, uh, the sheriff here would probably be staying outside as well, huh? Come. Seat. Honestly, I have... I'm surprised we didn't just meet you upstairs. Kind of pointing over at the sheriff, gesturing to the sheriff with the company that was expected to be here. I always yeah. prefer to meet people in my sanctuary. And the sheriff and I have an unspoken agreement, don't we? You just, the sheriff behind you just, hmm, can we get this over with? Yes, sounds good. We have a potential situation here. Tarnan launches right into it, explains what uh, is probably coming with the timeline of whenever the hell they get here. Um, my first priority is, can you help us... Number one, get the people out of the town, protect the people, get them to safety. If the town gets trashed and there's no loss of life, I can live with that. Frankly, so can the people that we get out of town. He, uh, Fenton listens to you. He kind of motions to one of the guards sitting next to you. The guard gets up, walks out the door, and then ten seconds later comes back in with an older man a long white beard about halfway down his chin he has a, a blue cap on that kind of follows his hair down his back and a white robe with I'm sorry a, a blue a light blue robe with gold trim around the edges and he kind of follows he leads him around and he sits, sits next to Fenton he kind of leans over Fenton looks at you looks at this gentleman so, you were right. Can she do it? And he looks at the sheriff. There are, what, roughly 1,200 people in Sandpoint, if I remember? I think so. Make sure I got my numbers right. Yes. Can she extend it? And the... Older gentleman next to him leans at him, kind of taps down. Well, she did this. I uh, I don't know exactly how long it would take, but 
I'm sure she could. I'm, I'm sure. And then Fenton looks at him, looks back. This uh, place was created for me as a favor by eh, an acquaintance of your and your friends. Uh, she was able to build this space in order for our safety. She could change it and extend it enough to be able to house the people of Sandpoint during this uh, raid. I had heard after you got back into town that d the giants were on their way for something. I was hoping you could enlighten me as to what, but at least we know they are coming, even if we don't know when. If she can uh, change the space, we might be able to keep them safe here until it is over. You said 1,400 people. Yeah, I think it's, he said, tw I think it's 12. 1,200? Let, now let me check. Either way is fine. Well, I want to get it right. That's Magnamar. Shandpoint. Shandpoint. How many people are in Shandpoint? Shandpoint. 1,200. Yes. So approximately 1,200 people. In and around. And then he kind of looks at you. How long do you think it would take her? He says to the gentleman sitting next to him. Well, it depends on how long it would take her to get here. We should have, should be able to create a large room in that space in about a day, probably. Just hope she can get here quicker than that. Fenton looks at you. So you have uh, no idea how much longer we have before they come? No. That was that was point number two. I was going to ask for some of your scouting abilities to aid in our tracking where they are, and maybe one of us being foolish enough to see if I can find out what they want, and if we can get it to them outside of town, even better. You, I... I am surprised that you haven't taken a guess as to what they want. These uh, giants, I take it you saw the Sahedrin all around them? Everywhere. Do you remember the last only job they sent you on? Yeah. Who were we trying to keep the book from? Right. I have two of the items the Ascended needs. The Ascended has two as well. There's only one more. If giants are coming here, it's possible that fifth one is somewhere in Sandpoint. And if they're coming, they at least think they know where. So I'm sorry, I understand where you're coming from, but I would not give this to them even if I had it. If he needs all five items? Three. He only needs three. You have the two. ritual, um, you do remember um, from the book, Geis and Red, and when you guys were talking about it, it did talk about that there were um, five items needed for this ritual to ascend to godhood. Yep. Um, there were five items total, only three were needed for the ritual to be complete.
So the ascended is coming here. Is your the ascended is sending giants here from the sound of it. I don't know if they would show up themselves, but they at least think it's here. I'm I'm guessing. Fennec and Dironor have been scouting the last couple of weeks and there has been chatter and activities among the giants. That's what perked my ears up and then you return with talk of knowing a raid is coming, which was very useful. I must thank you for that. That's fantastic. You're welcome. Maybe you could uh, not have two of the items that are needed for them to ascend in the same location. That'd be great. Can you, you know, hand one off to someone you trust and have them hide it permanently away from you? If, uh, first, uh, Mr. Quink here is working to rid us permanently of both of those items. Hopefully, within the next day or so, they won't be an issue. But even if so, as soon as that doorway closes that you came in from the White Deer Inn, let's just say that I'm not worried about anybody getting down here who I don't want down here. Okay. The next thing I want you to think about is how long does it take for 1,200 people to walk through that door? As long as it takes. We need to get them here. If the people out in the hinterlands, if they can come, great. If they can't, at least the giants are going to focus on Sandpoint proper. So they are safer, relatively. But you, and then he, he points at Broderd, or Mr. Quink, and kind of turns and looks at him. Go out and let Mary know that I request her presence. Yeah. Oh. Of course, of course. And then he gets up and just kind of bent over, hunched over, this old man scuttle out the door and then off. If hopefully she can get here in the next few hours and she can begin it's been more many a year since she created our little hideout. I hope tweaking it is as easy for her. Other character, just as a reminder, Mary, is that the um, like sorceress lady that we ran into at the, the heist? You did run into a sorceress lady named Mary Gray Malkin, yes. Yep. I don't have a lot of notes on her. That's really all I got. Oh, she didn't like turning flirt with her. <laughs> so, with the people here, what are what are you going to do when the giants come? The uh, town guard, and he looks at the sheriff. Well, they are. Brave. Most. I don't believe they will be more than a little use against joints. We're going to take out as many as we can, standing between them and the town. Or on the edge of town, wherever we decide is going to work best. Thankfully, I can offer at least a bit of advice or information. And you can thank your uh, your recent partners, Fennec and Dirinor, for this. Uh, there are not many giants. They don't populate extensively. At most, I don't think there could be more than a dozen, a dozen and a half that they would send this way. Otherwise, their stronghold would be easily taken. Not that 
18 giants would be anything to scoff at, but it's something. Eighteen oh, giants. We need a pit. <laughs> Eighteen giants versus one pissed off dwarf, uh, drunken master, flying feathered fiend, uh, ogre that will eat anything with her blades that you put in front of her. I say we will take out three. Uh, mage probably take out two. Me. Yeah, I'm just I just manage the talent. I like your optimism. I find it uh, reassuring. It's not so reassuring when you come up with those numbers of being 12 to 18 and we've only covered 5. 5 giants. If my team took out 5 giants, and you're telling me there's 12 to 18 coming. We still haven't won. We still haven't figured out how to match them. There's a reason the Ascended is sending giants and not goblins. <laughs> it will take Mary the better part of a full day, most likely to create the space necessary to house the people of Sandpoint. Once they're here, they're safe. I'm not worried about them. Once they're in here. Believe me, nobody will be able to touch them. But... Tyler looks over at Geisen. Through the dark? Looks, yeah, and then looks back at Benton. Stealing a trick from something I saw recently could Mary make a really large, really deep pit along an avenue of approach to the town that still had structure enough for a human and maybe even a horse to walk across, but should a giant step on it, its retarded ass would fall well into this hole and be much easier to contain, handle, dispose of, very alive. I cannot speak for the the full swath of the acts Mary and Heka can perform. I do not deign to speak for her. If you have some crazy scheme planned, she would be the person to talk to when she comes. I know what she has done for me. That is all. How many uh, of your good neighbors would be willing to stand and fight with us? Let's see. I've recalled Fennec and Dearenor. They should be here tomorrow morning. That is two. Who else is close? I could probably, within the next... 24 to 48 hours, I could probably supply you with 12 men, 12 good men. If I had more time, I could supply you with more, but those are, I could only 12 are within the distance to get back in time. And uh, since I know exactly what the sheriff has to offer, better than he does. You have 14 crowns guard that are around. And the sheriff just... You hear the sheriff like growl. It, it's 12. I'm counting you as two big man. So, I give you 12. You have 12. And whatever concoctions you can come up with before they come, whenever they come.
I would... Will you be joining us? I am... Not leaving this place. I can go Will your men to the doorway, but not further. Will your men accept my command or the sheriff's command, or will you put someone else in charge of them? If I tell them to, they will. Can Geisen hear this conversation? From I would say, time? yeah. If you're standing outside yeah. the door, the they're talking in normal uh, normal speaking voices. So I would say you'd be able to hear the whole the, thing. The intent is Tarnan is talking loud enough to make sure that his lieutenant can hear everything that's being said. I understand your pit thought um, if we have time perhaps Mary can do that but her and Heka are going to be focused on creating the space in this dimension for the send point people population agreed people first so, if even if they get the item as soon as they start leaving the town we can start doing guerrilla warfare we can start tracking them, we can start harassing them, taking them out one at a time. Agreed. So, if there's time, you can ask her about your idea, but the first day, she needs to be down here. What do giants fear? Do we know... Do we have an expert on giants? They are relatively reclusive. With their relatively small numbers, they don't venture out. There has not been a giant incursion outside of their home in centuries. The, uh, the Ascended must be persuasive to get the giants on his side. His time will come. I sense uh, familiarity. You do. Guys, do you have any thoughts on uh, how to handle this other than letting them get to what they want and picking them off one at a time? Am I am I able to converse? Oh yeah. The, from where, um, I ask if he has any ideas of where this book would be located in Sandpoint. Would it be in the tunnels? Because if we could find it before they get here, it would. It's not a book. The book has been recovered. Book. Bowl, scepter, crown, those have been found between myself and the Ascended. It is a set of scales, just to make sure we're on the same page. As for where, if we knew that, we would have them. If you know... Have some sealed doors in the magic place of the Goblin Crow. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, All it right. might not have before, but it is now. No. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just, See, that's the, best, was, that's the best part of letting was, you guys talk amongst yourself. You write the plot for me. Yes, thanks, guys. Oh, I hadn't filled in that part yet. Thank you. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any idea what the other two are? Um, he said bowl, ring, scepter, and crown are the ones that had been found. And the scales are the ones that, the only ones that were left out. Wait, so I thought he said book too. Book, no. oh. string? Book, ring, scepter, crown. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Book, 
ring scepter crown yes noble. those have been found scales are the ones that are still searching well and two more no i said there's only five one, two, three, four, five. Ha! Ah, I can count to yep. five. Two, two, one left. <laughs> math. Math. Uh, I'm public yeah. math is hard. No. Um. Do you do you know what these scales look like specifically? Lizards. The <laughs> dragon scales. No. Um. The book you recovered mentioned them there just called them silver scales that's all we have to go on I am assuming they are weighing scales but that book is 11 10,000 years old Fenton you said you've had uh, scouts out how far out can we be sure the giants aren't? I mean, obviously, if they were a couple of hours away, your scouts would have already told you. How far out would you say you were comfortable saying they have to be at least a day away? The closer they get, the more likely my scouts are to find them. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> would be surprised how stealthy a giant can be when they want to especially a stone giant in this type of environment I can tell you they are not within a day fairly confidently I cannot promise anything I do not know if they are if they've had any spells cast on them any items that allow them to travel quietly, silently, invisibly. I can tell you that if they were visible, we would probably have a couple hours warning. Probably. I don't have an impenetrable net. This is not the type of thing our organization was built for. So, kind of repurposing. Tarnan nonchalantly stands up and puts his hand on his chin and he's kind of walking at the back end of the room thinking. And he walks towards Geisen and as soon as his head is out of the doorway he tries to message Geisen. Geisen, can you hear me? I hear you. Yep. Geisen, that weird room whispering, messaging. Mm -hmm. That weird room of gravity. Weren't there a set of scales in there? I was just thinking about that myself. Tyron turns really... around and walks back towards the table. <sighs> Fenton, what's your intent? If you find that if if the scales are found and we defeat these giants, do I now have to put you down? Tarnan says it nonchalantly, like it's matter of fact what happened. Do you want to put me down? Only if you're trying to become a god. <laughs> I mentioned earlier, if Mr. Quink is successful, the two items in our possession will be gone and inert in the next day or so, as long as his educated guesses are correct. I don't want to be a god. I don't fucking care. I'm comfortable in my abode and with my status as it is. But after the Ascended did what they did when they took over the Iron Ring, I sure is fucking hell don't want them to be either. On that point, we are definitely aligned. What's if we you? were able no go ahead. if we were able to find these scales or craft some sort of 
replica. Maybe we could draw them away from the city. If we knew where they were and could show that we had them, I would agree. That would be something that might be plausible. But we don't know where they are, and we're not even sure if they have a better understanding of what these silver scales look like. Is there a silversmith in this town? There is a black smith, but I don't believe there is a silver. You materialist. Da, da, da. Locksmith. Carpenter. Sweets. Clothing. Hagfish. Rusty dragon. Goblin squash table. No! No specific silversmith. There is just a blacksmith. The two dog, two uh, red dog smithy that you stopped by. Okay, Benton. I'm gonna get out of your hair so you can have your troops get back to you and you can get your mages busy preparing a safe haven for our people. The people of Sandpoint. Hopefully. Bless you, my child. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, Mary and Heka are able to get here soon, so that she can get started. And how do we handle this? How do we convince the people that they all need to come enjoy the new underground digs? Are you kidding? You are uh, the heroes of Sandpoint. Let's just say you were well known when you were here but uh, news of your deeds have spread since you have left let's put here it, I put it that way much faster than our is uh, if you ask the random person on the street your Arakokra friend killed an ancient black dragon with one claw tied behind his wing at this point I know that's not what happened, but stories grow. Pretty close. Pretty close. Hmm. Rumors spread faster than disease, so it's not surprising. Which is why they're sending 18 freaking giants. At most. It could be four. It could be one. Very mm -hmm. sneaky. A giant, I don't know. Oh. He's been a giant this whole time, you guys. All big. <laughs> okay. We're going to get out of here. Let you do your thing. I'm going to have my troops look around for this device. Um, uh, tell your, uh, your friend out there. Uh, he can hear you. Good luck with that, my friend. Who's that? I pissed somebody off. <laughs> Ford is sitting like, like I'm, I'm going to get a picture of this. Ford was not happy with my comment. Ford up. Alright, so, he because he's sitting... Right in front of the microphone, like he's <laughs> singing into it. No, when you get the DM drunk, what happens is I have to go back and watch the video and take notes because I don't remember anything I said. <laughs> so whatever came out of my mouth is now canon, and I have to work it into whatever story I had already written. All right, so everybody's back. So um, you guys back. walk back up into the White Deer Inn. Oh dear. And Tarnan, Geisen. I'll Sheriff Hemlock is with you. Yep. Sheriff? You got any comments on this? I... 
I don't approve of the work that man does, but you can trust what he says. You'll yes. have my men, and we'll do the best we can. Have you seen a giant before? Thankfully, no. They how are many, big. <laughs> how many of your men do you think will stand their ground when they see one? I guess we'll find out. Hopefully all of them. Okay. I have a request to make of you. Alright. I need a work party to unbury something we buried. Digging up a body? Nope. Digging up a demon. I feel there's a backstory necessary. This might not um, be yeah, the best time to we, dig up a demon. Do you remember those goblins we wiped out and burnt? Insert name that I forgot. Thistletop. Thistletop, thank you. It's my portable beard. I mean, memory. I recall. There's something else underneath there, and I think we're going to go have a chat face to blade. I'm going to be honest. Considering you just said there's 12 to 18 giants coming, redirecting my men to try and dig up a demon doesn't seem like the best use of their time. I mean, if uh, you can get a different work party to show up and unbury this crap so that we can potentially find the scales, so that we can potentially get rid of the scales, take them out of play, I'd be good with that too. I thought you said the giants were coming to Sandpoint. Yeah. Thistletop is four miles north. Are they coming to Sandpoint or are they coming to Thistletop? I don't know. Where are the scales? They're guessing too, as far as we know. I, I messaged to turn in. Wasn't that gravity room underneath Sandpoint in the tunnels? I messaged back. Yes, you're right. However, if it's not in that room, where else could it be that we might have left it lying around? If That's and then I and then I initiate a message, if. The Giants aren't sure, according to the message we got, they're not exactly sure they think it's here. We saw all kinds of seven, oh, new message. We saw all kinds of seven-pointed shit in that, under Thistletop as well. In fact, if memory serves me, there was more seven-pointed star shit under Thistletop than there was under this town. Be true. If you can give me any reason... Oh, and now... <laughs> so Tarnan just, out of nowhere, continues the conversation with that message. If you can give me another reason why it's not there, I'd love to not waste time on it. I mean, until we know where it is, we don't know where it's not. So I think it makes sense to check all our bases. Just start under the town first? But I, if they have to go four miles and then dig all that out, that might take a while. So probably not a bad idea to have them start getting the party going. That was my thought. You got some of them start digging that up. Well, we check under the town here. We can verify it's not under the town. Again, if we got someone else throwing a Hail Mary to keep the people safe, even if this town gets raised, it can be rebuilt. What I can do once all the people are safe, my men are yours. Whatever you want them to do. If you want them to defend the town, they can defend the town. If you want them to go dig up an island, 
they'll go dig up an island. But I can tell you I'm not sending anybody outside of this town until these people are safe. That's because you believe 12 Crown's Guard are going to stop whatever comes walking in. I believe I'm not sending people away while there are civilians in this town. They might not be able to stop everything, but if they can save one person, I'm not sending them away. As soon as everybody's safe, I will completely turn over control of them to you. Once everyone's safe. Thank you, Sheriff. I'm going to go have uh, a few hours of rest, and my team and I are going to head out, well, head down early this morning to see what we can see. I'll check back with you once we're topside. All right. Get some rest. We're all going to need it. Then he turns and begins walking towards the garrison. What time of night is it now? I'd say it's probably nine or ten at this point. I'd say we'll say ten. Okay. Turn starts walking back. Two things, guys. Once the ser- sheriff and everyone else is out of your shot. This is just the sheriff. Yeah. There's nobody else around you right now. Number one. Am I the right leader for this? What was that? Am I the right leader for this? You've led us well so far. I'm not gonna bullshit you, I'm out of my depth here. If you told me we we're gonna face a couple of dragons, you know, two, I'd find a way. Three, four giants? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I can figure some shit out for our team to pull through on that. They start walking in with 6, 10, 12, 18, and maybe another dragon? I mean, at this point, it sounds like that's the absolute max that he thinks they could come at us with. But he doesn't really know, right? They could be sending, I mean, they're probably not expecting huge resistance at this town. There might be three giants, for all we know. So, I mean, I guess we have to plan for the worst and hope that there aren't that many. Um, but I don't think anybody is going to be able to lead us any better than you. I don't think that anybody's going to be able to feel comfortable fighting 18 giants. <laughs> yeah, me too. So my, my one thought, or two thoughts, I guess, one, if we can actually find the thing and then either use it to draw them off or replace it with a replica, so then they come in and they steal that one and they leave, they don't have the actual thing to do the whole ritual, um, or if we can't find it, then we try to find something in the town or make something that looks plausible and then try to use that to draw them off are we going to get the town's finest scales hmm. I mean, there, there should be some dragon scales arriving yeah they're already here they're with the skull I mean Far off we only topic. have a killer, uh, not a killer. Off topic from our impending doom or glorious success, where we all ascend to our own godhood, at least in tales and legend. I've been pondering, and I think I wanted to, before I go any farther with my pondering, I, I wanted to talk to you about it. Just you. Um... Tonight, when you walked through that door, it kind of brought it back. Your, uh... Scars. 
far worse than mine. I I've never thought about fixing or covering mine. I've gained a little bit of power now, and I'm wondering... I mean, technically, my magic can seal wounds if we cut those scars from you. Can I heal bit back to a normal colored flesh, a smoother flesh? If I discover that, I can. Is that something you want me to try? Um, out of character, would Geisen have an idea of whether the kind of magic he has would be capable of something like that? Give me an account check. Thirteen. You would be skeptical. Um, I mean, if it were possible, sure, I'd love to not carry around all these scars, but I think it's unlikely. I think the, the people that helped heal me enough to save my life and crafted this amulet for me. Um, nothing against your, your power, but their power was probably greater in, in that area. But, but yes, I, if it were possible, and you'd be willing to do it, I would be all for it. I feel like we're setting ourselves up for, like, the back shaving scene in the craft. Anybody? Yes. No. Um, I, yes, don't, I, remember I don't, that. and I don't want to. That sounds terrible. Yeah. It, it, she had burns on her back in final last dish effort. They shaved them off, and everything was clear after that. Because I, I was Im imagining... Um, <laughs> With the uh, the stone skin or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Which it, it was gonna be like that. Uh, no thanks. But... <laughs> that was just a big scat picker. That's all he wanted. Yep. Ginormous. But I uh, I really appreciate you thinking that much on it. You guys are meaning a lot more to me than I thought when we first met almost a month ago. <laughs> it's uh, uncharacteristic of me to let you all in this close. And that's why I was weird to ask. But yeah, I had thought about it, and I figured I'd better ask you before I bothered to pursue it any further. Uh, it means a lot. Well, the intent was to help, not to give you false hope. You should have done it. All right. Awkward moment passes. I'm going to walk off now. Um, I'll uh, see you bright and early in the morning. That's good. Should we, uh, should we wait till the morning to get Icky up to date? I don't know if he'll still be... Are, are we still walking? Yes. Back to the... You will still be walking. Icky, yeah. uh, how long did you end up staying up? Uh, but what time was when they left? Probably left around nine. I mean, they were probably gone for an hour-ish. Icky would have stayed up for at least two okay. before considering going to bed. All right, so then when you two walk back into the Rusty Dragon, Icky would still be sitting there, enjoying his Beba Rajas. Welcome back. Everything, uh... 
go smoothly. Nobody died. Plans were discussed. Possibilities have arrived. I would like you, I know this is a weird thing to ask of me, of you, um, stop drinking, get some rest. We're going underground tomorrow night, or first thing in the morning, we're going to try to find something. All right. Icky just gives a curt nod, finishes his beer, and settles up, and it's like, all right. <laughs> Bed Turn and nods to him. Enjoy those pillows. Yeah. Turn and nods to him. Turn and nods to Geisen. And Turn and goes upstairs and goes back to sleep in his now slightly eviscerated bed. <laughs> Geisen heads to bed as well. All right. Then everybody sleeps till morning. I do have, uh, Tammy, did Grilda sleep alone? After the bath, yes, I would say. Okay. Um, then in the morning, after, because uh, Grilda and Sanishi would hit their long rest time before everybody else, since they went to bed a couple hours earlier. So um, Grelda awakens to a knock at her door. In the morning, it would be probably about six in the morning. You would... Make sure Sasha is also awake and then go get the door. <laughs> you, well, as you pick up Sasha, you do know that there's alcohol downstairs. Hot damn. Shocker. What a surprise. We Shocker. are in a bar. Yes. So as you open the door, um, you see uh, Miko standing outside. She's like, I have to show you something. And then she turns around and starts walking down the stairs. Oh, we be following. <laughs> So she takes you outside, and the sun has just started to come up. So she takes you out the front door, leads you away about 30 feet, and then stops and turns to you, puts her hands on your shoulders, and turns you back around to face the uh, front of the Rusty Dragon, and she points. And where was a, a hastily put together Rusty Metal Dragon, hence giving the place its name, oh. you see a polished white um, dragon skull at an angle on the top. She just points, she goes, thank you. I wanted to display it prominently. Zelda does the like wide um, anime eyes like of amazement and goes, it's beautiful. <laughs> and I have one more thing, but perhaps I should thank you. And then she walks, takes you back inside to the bar. And then from behind the bar, she pulls out a, um, like a pony keg, turns it, pops it open, pours a, uh, a tankard, and then slides it over to you. That was delivered last night. I heard it was yours. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, y'all, we need to do a sniff check. <laughs> that is perception, right? Yes. See what happens. That is just a regular check. Oh, rolled. I got You have COVID. I guess I don't need... It, does proficiency mean that I could have rolled with advantage? Uh, no, proficiency... Add, that means you add your proficiency bonus to it if you are proficient in it. Proficient in it. I assume this would have automatically D &D, done D &D that. D&D Beyond rolled. automatically does it. Okay, yeah. Because I rolled real high anyway. So, yeah. I, I know everything about this beer, including its birthing point and, like, where it was conceived and all of the cinnamon. Well, you already know it. that because you're the one who made it. But... This was me figuring that out without, like, asking her. As you as you um, pull it towards you, um, not only can you tell that this is your recipe, but um, the aromas, like, envelop you and cause the corners of your mouth to curl into the slightest unconscious smile. You take a deep whiff and then you actually bring it to your lips and you take a sip and you taste lightly um, toasted malts with subtle spicy hops blending into cinnamon flavors and creamy sugar. Their coalescence is so uncannily close to fresh baked cinnamon rolls that it takes your mind a moment to realize you are not in a bakery. She made my cinnamon beer? She did. Holy shit. Where's the spearmint? I mean, 
the beer back when we were in what was the city the big one oh uh, magnamar magnamar and i left it in a stable oh, stall there that's right that's right all right so so you have cinnamon Girl, you, you made cinnamon roll beer yes so, Gerlda takes like, I don't know, five whole minutes of silence just <laughs> smelling and lightly sipping this. And then she like turns to Amiko, who also I know is a brewer, yep. and like has this like look of excitement of like, do, do you have, can I bottle this? I need to bottle this immediately. I need, I need, and then she like starts counting on her fingers, which is ridiculous because she shouldn't have to, but she's like one, two, three, four. I need f four bottles of this. She, um, Amiko just smiles and like shakes her head and she starts pulling out growlers. Just kind of setting them in front of you. Grelda reaches into her pack, which she apparently always has on her no matter what, and pulls out the, uh, I think they were, were they blaze harpy feathers that I had? They were harpy I think, feathers. I thought they were blaze harpy. Let me see if I've got it written down in my inventory. Because you got those from Thistletop. Yep. I did, yes. They were from the harpy that was uh, stapled to the wall. <laughs> right next to those silver scales. <laughs> That's where they, that were. they were. I, I cannot tell you how happy I am that the ancient bottle of wine was not the fifth item. That would have made me so sad. <laughs> uh, uh, large black feathered wings. I thought it was a blaze harpy. Doesn't matter. No, I just black. Just black. So she she ties one feather around each of these, and then like 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 a little kid on Easter morning goes like hops upstairs and puts the the glasses outside of everyone's door. <laughs> it's like Easter morning, right? Okay, so there's there's one for everyone, and it's got the harpy feather on it, and uh, she leaves a little note saying. Um, Blaze Harpy, and it's beer, not a cider, right? Yeah, yeah it was a beer. beer. Yeah, Blaze Harpy beer. Um, courtesy of the standpoint. Are we at the standpoint five? We are, right? Five? Yeah. Sasha doesn't count as the six, so it's the standpoint five. <laughs> and then she makes sure that if you open the door quickly, it won't like knock it over or anything. And she thinks about knocking. And then she decides only to knock on Icky and Tarnan's door. No, actually, you know what? She knocks on everyone's door. She can't help herself. She knocks on everyone's door and then like runs away, <laughs> but like hides around the corner so she can like see their reaction. So like, uh, what time in the morning is this happening? Like by now we're probably at close to eight, but not um, quite eight. Well, you would have woken up because you went to bed at like nine. So an eight hour mm -hmm. sleep from nine would have put you around like Five. I would say everybody went to bed at 10, 11. I would say it's about seven in the morning. Okay. That would have been everybody else's eight hour sleep. That's what we'll say. It's like, Icky peeks out the door. I'm like, starts smelling. Do I, do I have to have like some sort of like check to see if I smell it? I, I would say no. No? All right. So Icky starts, like, cartoon flying <laughs> towards the beer. You know, like, he catches whiff of this beer and starts, like, fluttering his way okay, down but the hall. When you, when you say cartoon flying, do you mean where, like, most of the wing is tucked in against you and you're just flipping? The, yep. All right. All right. Okay. That exactly. That it, you are, yes. That is exactly. So, like, he's just going, like, Click, because he's clearly still like flying. Because that would be silly if he weren't. Um, one doesn't start, just float. Um, one, doesn't, one doesn't simply float into Mordor. <laughs> yeah. Into beer yeah. door. Into beer door. door. <laughs> ah. Um. But yeah, no, he, he just like kind of like, at, like at, the, at any point would he like spot growled on his way to to said beer? Well, I think you she know, put the beer right outside of his door, didn't she? He did. It's right outside the door. Like so, if you open it and you looked and down, you would see it. Being a bird, you did look up a lot while doing your role play there, so maybe you would have not seen it immediately. If so you were to look probably, around, probably like floated out, did a little circle in the front of the hallway, 
looked down and was just like, and I just and I just freaked out no. forward. Sorry, buddy. Like, looks up and down the hall, and is is Grell the well hidden enough? So I'm I'm gonna allow you to do a check on that. Um, okay. Because you might consider Paddock would do this, right? All right. So, oh, wow. Icky probably doesn't know what's going on. Um, Wait, wait. How, how high did you roll? Was it less than 10 or more than 10? Right. I rolled a 5, and my perception is a plus 2. All right, I need to okay. go put Libby to bed. You guys can keep going with this, though. Okay. okay. All right. I would say at that... Unless you were really, really looking, like from an RP perspective, I'd give it to you. But like, no, then you wouldn't notice. No, no. He, he, uh, honestly, he's just probably like enthralled enough with like the the knowledge of what's just in front of him here, <laughs> and you know he knows well enough to know that it's like it's not poisonous. So he just like he's like looking around. He's like, oh boy, oh boy. And, and drinking some of that. I will say, however, we we know what happened to Iggy at the hagfish, so even if it was poisonous. Yeah, no, he'd just kind of deal with it. It would like, you know, he'd have his, his bad times, and we would like to think that he would learn from them. No, no. Uh, he probably wouldn't. But we could like to think that he would. Well, okay, sure. <laughs> About this time. All right. So Tarnan, after the knock on the door, says, come in. Nothing happens. Come in. Nothing happens. And then here's Icky going, ooh, ah, ooh. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh. Okay, fine, whatever. And Tarnan goes to the door and opens it and says, Icky, if this is... Huh. Picks it up, looks at it. What did you say was on What did it say on it? Uh, Blaze Harpy Beer... Uh, courtesy of the Sam Point Five. That's cool. So now, Tarnan will look for Grelda. What did you want? A perception check? Uh, oh. Yes, because you're not feeling anything. You're just listening and whatevering. Okay. Roll. Roll, damn it. Is this how Sean feels all the time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we found our new DM. <laughs> I rolled a 25. Oh my god. Not only can you clearly hear her tittering around the corner, you can actually see her like red braid, like, like, <laughs> just keeps peeking. There is zero doubt in your mind what is going on right now. So without opening it, can he smell the flavor? Yes. Yeah, because Nikki could smell it too without having to roll yeah. anything. So the, the cinnamon must be very, very pungent. Hold on. I'm... And it's in a tank. It doesn't have a lid, so it makes sense. Uh, while she's speaking, she might see a recognition on her. I mean, he knows that it's from her, and he's kind of smiling. It's a beautiful gesture. And then it clicks. Oh God, this is the beer I asked for. She made this. I don't know if I should drink this or treasure it. Say that out loud. Uh-huh. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, she says. I think maybe I should drink it. <laughs> and if he, he, he heard, he's just going, both, 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 both. Drink it too. <laughs> Tarnan calmly walks over, grabs Icky's claw, and uses it to pop the cork. <laughs> Is it a bottle or a oh, tinker? I think she, she gave me growlers, so yeah. I don't know if they would be considered corked or not. I don't know what a growler in a medieval society looks like. I in barely know what one looks like in our society. In our society, you just twist the top off and drink it, so let's yeah, just yeah. assume. Cork, cork to replace twist off. I, I sounds good. Da, 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 da. Let me see here. Clear that. Like, so yeah, I guess Geisen would uh, would approach the door and just kind of carefully open it and look, and then notice the beer on the floor. Um, 
And then you, it, was there like a note on it or something? So, so yeah, I guess uh, I mage hand the, the note up and read it. And uh... I want you to casually use mage hand all the time. That is hilarious. <laughs> Honestly, my brain just like, what, 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 you, you can't bend like the couple inches necessary to reach the floor? Inches. Wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Technically, oh. lots of things are measured in inches, you know. Still. <laughs> just, ouch. I mean. I just love I, I the power issue. move of I don't even need to bend down because I'm, 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 I'm a freaking mage. Yeah. <laughs> Standing up that tall. <laughs> Give me that shit. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, and so yeah, so Geisen would pick it up. You would smell the cinnamon. I think Geisen heard you talking about making the cinnamon beer. It seems I believe familiar. the whole group was there at the conversation because it was right after um, you decided that uh, you wanted to keep Grelda in the group after her note. So it was like I think, I think it was there. Was it before that turn in? Because. I had cinnamon notes that I went there to purchase cinnamon intentionally. It was, yeah, it was, uh, she said, if you don't want to be in the city, let's go out of town. And that's when she got him drunk and he said, yeah, I'd love to try a cinnamon beer. And I think that was the next morning you said, I have to go blah, 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 blah. And off you went yeah. and you got all the- so, so, so no one else knows that she oh, made the cinnamon really beer for Tarnan specifically. Did we know that there was a cinnamon beer being made? Probably. She wasn't real subtle about it, and then she no. paid to, like, keep the beer making in a stable stall, so yep. if anyone was paying attention or trying to know it, they would know it. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like Sunishi was with you while you did a lot of this. I think oh, you were the only great. person who stable with me, yeah. Um, so, Gusin would pick up the beer, and then, um... Oh, the DM is back. Can I message you... without seeing somebody? Do you remember? I can look on my thing. Here we go. Is That's that cool. message or is that sending? Uh, it's in range, somebody who's 120 feet away. As long as you have a general idea in which direction they are. Okay, well, I... Yeah, you have I to attempt... point your finger towards them. I attempt to message Gralda where I think she may be... Oh, I think you have to roll a perception check, good sir. Everyone else has had to. Oh! Oh! oh. That's some good oh. stuff, John. I'll, I'll peer out, I'll peer out uh, down, down the hallway first. I'm sure Tarn is giving it away. 18. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you're fine. You got this. Okay, well, I guess since I saw you, I wouldn't really need to message you. Um... Okay, and but Geisen isn't so sure about drinking um, this early in the morning when we have so much crap going on today. And he kind of wants to treasure it, so he just kind of like holds it and gives you like a meaningful look, and then messages you, "Thank you, I can't wait to try this," and then like puts it in his pack. Can Can I make a small request? Can you lift your top hat and put it under there and then put it back down? <laughs> it seems dangerous. I might drop it and break it, but I just I, assume I, you have what? a magician's hat and things just store in there like Mary Poppins' bag. Obviously. There are if there's a bag of holding in D and D, why can't there be a hat of holding? Nobody says there can. Yeah, you just gotta make it, mage. Well, you gotta take it to an enchanter and get them to enchant your hat Man. as a bag of no, holding. No, just just make I'm it. sorry. Idea. Every single time you have summoned Owlivander, I imagine you taking the hat off and there's just an owl up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's canon Am now. Am I a magician or a wizard? Yep. Yes. You tell us. Both. And the thing is, is I, we're not making you do sleight of hand checks. For all I know, you're like shoving the owl in the back and like, like being real cool about it. It's like, yes, unsummon! Bison is actually a rogue, y'all. We don't know. <laughs> it's been great tricks this whole way. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. So Grilda just giggles, like, 
audibly to anyone who's not icky, apparently. This is awesome. Well done. This is well done. Mm. I can't, I can't drink the whole thing. Is there more? Can I drink the whole thing? Is there more? This is awesome. More, she says in like the loudest whisper possible. <laughs> oh. I, I still just really want to picture Geisen messaging random people in the hall and just like shooting messages in random directions and some like <laughs> some of us like hello <laughs> yeah no no there is no beer outside of my room hello i didn't leave beer outside of anyone's room <laughs> yes god <laughs> yeah. god yeah. 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 I didn't you? expect for God to sound so small, but here we are! Now he sounds small? Damn, so, dude. So, are we, are we in the same hallway? So, like, would I yes. see Icky and Tarnan as yeah, well? Okay. You would. And, and, am I looking out there before either of them has opened their beer? Um, I would say it all kind of happens relatively close together, not simultaneously, but. She Grelda did like the run down the hall like ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah. like really quick, so everybody was kind of getting up at the same time. Yeah, Tarnan gave a little bit of a gap before he made it to the doorway, and we haven't heard from Sunishi because everything's happening very fast. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind okay, of. Okay, well, if if I am in time, um, when Icky pops the the cork off, I would use prestidigitation to make off. like sparks come off of it and like some musical notes play as the <laughs> Grelda gasps audibly Icky takes this as as granted it's like well yes of course clearly Grelda has perfected beer <laughs> and this is what happens when one does that this is amazing. the best beer always has sparks and music yeah. That's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's right, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, Tarnan, did you want to add anything to yours before we make sure we know what Sunishi does? Um, now that there's a whole lot of people standing in the hallway, Tarnan's just gonna smile and say, this is amazing. Thank you. I'm gonna go put this somewhere very, uh, and he kind of trails off and walks over to his room and hides it. But that's it. Now, now Sunishi can come storming up with her axes. Disturbed I mean, by slumber. Oh wait, no, that's that's a laugh. I'm sorry. Kind of, you know, walk out of my room, stretching, scratching my ass. Oh, I missed that. Morning thing. You know. Fix the bottle. Cling, cling. <laughs> Sunishi has not been a great like alcohol drinker, aren't? Of all of us. I mean, if anybody has a reason to drink. Well, so but much. also she does love pastry. We know this. Yeah, it does smell like cinnamon rolls. It's it's alcoholic it's cinnamon rolls. Cinaholic alcohol rolls? Close enough. Cinahol. Cinaholic. Cin. 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 Alright, so. Anybody else doing anything with their, their morning beer? Savoring it. Drinking it. Putting the rest away. It. Trying to stop drinking it. Alright. So then. Oh. Uh, so, so then. Well, while they're like going back into the rooms and whatever, Grola like, like cartoon tippy toe hops down the stairs, and like grabs Amiko in a big hug. This is the best morning ever. So, are you down there by yourself while everybody's still up there? Yeah, I, once they started like going back in the rooms and stuff, she, you know, she was very sneaky. She was Patek Sinishi, Patek -sneaky. sneaky almost. Yeah, Patek yes. Sneaky. All right. Well, she she hugs you back, and then as as she breaks the hug. One more thing for you and your group. And then out of, like, her, pulls it out of, from behind her, and it's a rolled up scroll, rolled up piece of paper. This is for your group. And then she hands it to you. 
So sensing that this is not like a, a let's be giddy and open this quickly moment, Grelda actually very carefully unrolls whatever the scroll is. Um, it is the deed to the goblin squash stables. Grelda oh. like lifts it up so that her eyes are covered and it takes like a minute or two. And then she says, thank you. I, since he didn't have any family who came to claim it, I bought it and Paddock has been running it for the last 10 days. Give him something to do. So if you're here, it's yours. Otherwise, you've got somebody to take care of it for you. Do you have a sense that he's been helping? Because she can't see him. He's been sneaking up on horses for 10 days. Y'all, we know that's what's been happening. Yeah, he, he, pre, he said that pretty explicitly. Yeah. Like, that's what he's been doing. <laughs> Running the no, he's stable. Been him too. He said he's been he said He said you can only groom a horse so many times. So he's been grooming them too. But he's definitely been scaring the shit out of every horse in there. Let's, hey, let's be real. Not necessarily he's maybe they've not, not scaring those at horses at all. Even though horses are learning to go, oh, here he comes. Just look away. Eventually, he's not scaring them, maybe. But, I mean, horses are, are like, they're unstable creatures to begin with. They're not quite fainting goats, so I'm sure they're not, like, turning <laughs> sideways with their legs straight up in the air. But, like... <laughs> We're past that stage, but at the same time, you don't scare a horse because they react like they kick. He did yeah, mention he, getting kicked. Yeah, he did mention getting kicked multiple times. So all of this is hilarious, but it's a very, very touching gesture. So we're going to go with the touching gesture <laughs> side and not the hilarious side. And Grilda rolls it up and hands it back to her and says, would you keep this for us? We live the kind of lives where this is dangerous for us to have. I'll keep it here, but it's, it belongs to your group. And you actually, when you opened it up, the, uh, the deed of ownership, it did have each of like each of the group's names written on it. So Grelda will make a mental note. Let's hope it doesn't fly away to tell the group that they own a stables that Paddock works at, but <laughs> I can't get rid of that kid. <laughs> Don't, nobody wants to get rid of that kid. Nobody wants to. We've tried to make Tarnan apprentice him, and he's still getting better at being sneaky, even minus Tarnan's help. So, you know. I mean, he's moved up to buying us beers, so. Or stealing them. We don't even know. <laughs> he's not up beers. There's Preston, a different. Preston, irritation. Preston, your irritation. <laughs> it's a whole new branch of oh, majory. Yep. Yep. I love in the in this world you can drink that prestidigibiration, but it doesn't actually get you drunk, but you don't notice because you've had a beer. You feel like you've had a beer. Doesn't make you full and doesn't make you drunk, but you can just drink it forever. Forever. I could live with this. Alright, um, is there anything anybody else wants to do before your day like officially begins? Nope, I want to officially begin. Well, it's it's ten twenty, mm -hmm. so that's why I figure we will save the official start of this day for the next session. I should know if there's anything anybody else wanted to do before everybody comes downstairs and you do whatever you're gonna do for the day. No, oh, I mean I was gonna say breakfast. Sneeshy's not terribly much of a morning person, so you know. Just grumbling at everybody until she gets her coffee. Yeah. Okay. Her blood coffee. <laughs> That's just how you play, right? Hey, bring your wrist over here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, nope. All right. Well, then I guess I know it's a few minutes early, but don't want to get too too deep into anything that we can't finish. Oh so. yeah. Oh yeah. There. Lord. So uh, sleep. And we'll call it here, and we'll uh, take up the next session.